Yesterday's price is not today's price. 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 Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. This is the Maverick Podcast. I am your host, DJ Maverick. Today, we are rolling out the red carpet. Once again, we have the one and only finance bro, Daniel Solis, and also legal bro, legal bro. Jorge Solis. Welcome to the podcast. First off, I just want to say it's such an honor to be here. You know, I, when you started this, it was just a dream. It was. It was a vision. And you've implemented it. I can't tell you just how proud I am of you uh, carrying this. And I can't wait to see how it goes. It only took like 70 plus episodes to convince (laughs) you guys to be on the actual. Well, I got to get in before you get too big because I'm in the soft, like the right, the right spot right now. It's not too big of a show that I'm an embarrassment. Yeah. But it's not too small of a show that it's an embarrassment. So it's like. Like so you, you were waiting for me to build a decent audience before you're like, okay, yeah, maybe I'll swing by. Yeah, I don't have yeah. the imp- entrepreneurial spirit that you do. You That's are true. one to put your neck out. I'm a legal bro. Yeah. Like I, legal bros are conservative, not risk takers. We're trying to mitigate risk, and so that's a like a kind of a kind way to say I'm not as crazy as you. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only the crazy yeah. people uh, move things. I think, but like yeah. I could still be on. It's great. You know, I can be on. I'm small time, so I can be on. But, it, you know, later on, you're going to get so big that you're going to be like, I don't sure. know, like airplane <laughs> mode, you know, I don't know. Right. So this is a perfect time to be but on. But truly, truly an honor. We are honored to be here. Yeah. yeah, I'm super honored. I always tell my guests, you know, for the 1% of the people out there that mm-hmm. don't know who they are, to, to introduce themselves. So sure. I'm going to give you guys the stage. Yeah. Would you like to go first? Uh, why don't you go? All right. So I'm Finance Bro. <laughs> my name is uh, Daniel Solis. Um, and I, um, I live in New York right now, but originally from Oklahoma, grew, uh, born and raised here. And, um, my background, I guess I grew up here, um, went to school in upstate New York, worked on wall street for a little bit. And now I work at a nonprofit awesome. in finance. Very cool. Yeah. I, I'm a legal bro for all those that don't, what are we calling you then? Like entertainment bro? Like entertainment entrepreneurial bro? bro? Dreamer, bro. Dreamer bro. Dreamer bro, okay. It's, so has too many side hustles, bro. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're bros as everybody knows, or now knows. Uh, I, I took a little different route. I also grew up in Oklahoma City with my bros. Um, went to college in the East Coast, lived in New York for a bit, went to law school, uh, worked in Capitol Hill, worked for law, law firms on Wall Street. So you're brushing moved, over, went to school moved, in the East Coast. Moved. But let's, let's make a little <laughs> pause there because you just didn't go to school in the East Coast. It's a small community college that some people call Yale University. Yeah, but big, big accomplishment. Most of us like, refer to it as, as school in New Haven, which is about as embarrassing. See, I've, I've, I've owned up to it. I, I will tell people I went to Yale. Uh, I'm very proud of it. It He's was great. Up about it. Yeah. it was it's, it's it's a great it's a great school. I was very happy. Was lifelong friends. Uh, after Yale, went to work on Capitol Hill. I've worked on went to law school. Worked for law firms, and then moved into from sort of blue chip corporate to more of a venture startup. And then now I'm in private equity. Awesome. Uh, so it's a it's a bit of a little bit of a loop. Excited to see where it goes. I may have to go into the podcasting business. I don't know. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I always tell people that I'm always the the disappointment in the family. I mean, anytime that I get to brag on you guys, I always do it when I talk to people, uh, tell them about the bros. Like I always have. We've all work. we've all had disappointing. <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm the black sheep of the family. I don't yeah. know. Like it, it's, it's, the brown uh, sheep. The brown sheep. Yeah. Uh, but I'm yeah. very proud of that. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> no, so, we all have our moments. Like, look, it's like anything in life. I think you. You set out, like if, if you had asked me coming out of high school, what was it going to be like? Yeah. Private equity lawyer would not have been even, it wasn't yeah. even a thing I knew. That wasn't your right? dream. Right. So, <laughs> you know, we're, we're just making our way through life. And, um, you know, I think we've had it pretty good. So I'm pretty proud of what we've all done. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We have a lot of cool topics that I threw out there that I want to talk to you, you guys about. But before we do that, maybe we just do a quick recap. You know, it's always... You know, halfway through the year, it always flies by. So yep. I definitely want to hear maybe some of the highlights of, you know, what's what's occurred so far. Highlights? Uh, well, for me, so last year was rough. I uh, I fractured uh, my ankle. Yeah. It was not a, not a strong start. A um, bunch of other stuff happened that you guys know about as well. And um, after that, you know, I was here in Oklahoma for six months. So recovering from surgery. So from that, I bounced back. I'm walking now. 
and uh, lost a bunch of weight, you know, went to the gym, became a gym bro. Nice. <laughs> and, um, you know, pretty regular about it now. So, yeah. Um, yeah, after that, I mean, you know, very positive, very grateful, very, uh, that's about to my era I'm in right now. Just, you know, very grateful for everything, for family, for friends, uh, for work. All, all stuff is going pretty well in all those areas now. So I think, um, yeah, I'm just proud of the bounce back. Yeah, know? Daniel took it in the chin. Let's just yeah. be honest. I got like, kicked while I was down. He was kicked while I was down. What's that? That's very life. self inflicted. Though. The Sinatra yeah, song, yeah. That's yeah, Life. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is the embodiment this is, of that I felt song. it. But, but you also had some cool trips. So maybe highlight a few of the trips. Cool that, trips. You know? Um, cool trips. What cool trips did I go you on? Go to Puerto Rico. Yeah. I did go to Puerto Rico. PR. PR, yeah. PR is, I don't know if I can curse, so I won't say it. Uh, <laughs> you it's can muy, it's muy C word. That is my C word. That's yeah. that's a very popular cool. thing there. Very cool. Uh, very cool. Yeah. So yeah, I went there. I went to Old San Juan. I went actually where um, I stayed right next to La Factoria, which is like where Despacito was shot. Nice. The music video. So it was pretty cool. That's very cool. So I went there obviously for the culture and um, <laughs> the food, the food, and yeah. you know the, the history, the history, right? all yeah. of Puerto Rico. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I went traveled for. I like that. Yeah. How about you, Jorge? What, you know, highlights. Yeah, it's been pretty. cool. Quiet year. I think I'm, uh, I got engaged at the end of last year. Pretty excited about that. Congrats. Yeah, my yeah. Love Congratulations. Uh, so we've been sort of planning mode. We're really excited about the fall. We're getting married. Uh, and got a bachelor trip coming up. Combination Miami, Dublin. So I'm excited about that. And That's you good. travel all the time. So I don't even know. Mr. Which, Worldwide. <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. Like what trip do you even want to highlight? Because every time I was like, okay, Jeez, what city are you in? <laughs> like the, the most fun trip I've ever taken, shout out Kazim, uh, one of my buddies from Yale, yeah. invited us to his wedding in Pakistan, wow. which it, I would never have gone to Pakistan, but yeah. for Kazim. Lahore. And uh, he he's just, he's just a great guy. Obviously set it up so it'd be super easy. Had this one guy, Asad, who was kind of like the fixer. It was just imagine like somebody out of a movie that like has everything set up for you, can anticipate things. Okay. He was the fixer, and he, and that trip was extraordinary. We got to see a lot of historic sites, walked into a beautiful mosque. I've never done that. Uh, the wedding itself was amazing, and it was just lovely. Uh, the whole trip, uh, it's hard to replicate. I, I don't think I've ever been in a country so different than what we've experienced. Yeah. Um, so that was fantastic. But, you know, I think we're excited. I think uh Beyonce and I are, are talking maybe Australia and New Zealand. So that's oh, coming up. The, down under. Down Jeez. under. All right. Yeah. Uh, like so we're it. excited about that. But yeah, more to come. Awesome. Very cool. So we have a lot of topics. I figured we kick it off with uh, something that I was kind of, I guess, kind of amazed by that it took so long. Right. Sure. So Uber finally posted a profit. Yep. Right. It only took uh, $31.5 billion in losses to basically like replicate a taxi with an app. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember the first time you took an Uber? I do. Yeah. What was it? Where was it? Uh, I think it was in New York, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. you were in New York. Yeah, yeah. thanks. You for didn't call me. When was this? <laughs> it was a while back. I mean, if you think about you it, remember it's, I don't know. Yeah, hey, yeah. Jesus. Oh. Remember how growing up people would always say like, "Don't get in a car with stranger." That's yeah. exactly. That's what why it took so long to be yeah. profitable. Yeah. 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 So you got to fight back parents saying don't get in cars with strangers. Yeah. yeah, I was in New York as well. I remember, so I was in New York pre-Uber days, and this was back when you had to, like, hail a cab. Right. Oh, yeah. And the cabs had tremendous power. Like, if they didn't, like, I lived in Brooklyn at the time. If they didn't want to go to Brooklyn at 2 a.m., good luck. Good luck finding cab. And, and there was no number to call, just, nothing. Uh, you just waited maybe around. Like a black car you could call or something. Yeah. It, was, it was a disaster. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so when Uber came around, I remember being enthusiastic because you would put in the place you were going and the car was already on the way. And that's what they were, where they were going. They were going to ask. They were not going to ask you. Where are you going? Right. And then decide whether or not to take you. Which and they usually take the scenic route so that way they can charge right. more, right? Yeah. That, that happens keeps to running. me, right? Yeah. 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 It, it, was, uh, it was a great innovation. I honestly, if I had to guess of all the startups that would have been successful, which by the way, Uber is probably top 10 yeah. successful startups 
of all time. You think so? I think a unicorn. So. Yeah, Just in so, terms uh, of like the return that investors got on this thing, it was incredible. Well, probably if you got in early, but I mean, if if you waited that yeah. long for yeah. for a profit, I mean, I don't know. Well, there's a lot of companies that 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 are unprofitable. I think Snapchat still hasn't turned a profit. Right. I think Amazon for the longest. I don't even know if it probably maybe it turned a profit. Probably profitable now with AWS. Yeah. Um, it, that's not uncommon. I think a lot of startups do. In the startup world, right? Imagine me yeah. as a small business saying, I'm just going to go through $31.5 billion in losses before I can make some money. Yeah. You think people, bank is going to like sign a check for me? No, but, but that's <laughs> that's kind of the, 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 if you think about that, that's kind of a little bit, it's annoying, but it's also calming because like you may have had the, the same idea, but just weren't able to connect with the right people get the right backers to see you through the depths of that sort right. of money burning exercise. Yeah. I mean, you see the opposite of that having today with uh, Elon buying X, I guess we're calling it now. Yeah. Destroyed $20 billion I of would, uh, brand value. Apparently, you know, this guy has created trillions of dollars of value. Of course, if he says, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this with Twitter, you're, you're going to back it, but right. it, it's proven to be a disaster. Yep. But that, to me, it speaks volumes to the actual use case for that app, regardless of all the craziness that has happened to Twitter, it's stayed alive. So like I said, so, so like a business, if you're starting a business, obviously, like you need to fund it. How do you fund it? It's either equity or debt. Uh, in the startup world, it's all equity. And so long as people believe in your idea and that you're putting money to grow the business to eventually get, make it profitable, um, you know, Uber took a while, a while, but eventually, like to their credit, they've turned a profit. I, I don't know how sustainable it is. Like I said, if you had, if I were a venture investor back in the day when they were pitching this idea to me about a startup company that's a taxi company, yeah, I would not have thought successful unicorn. I um, think uh, Gary Vee uh, mentions that as like one of his greatest regrets that he was like, I, I don't, I don't know if I believe yeah. in this, and he didn't get in early. So he used yeah. his money instead of the Uber investment for an apartment. I yeah. think at the time, so he's just like, <laughs> imagine oh, could have bought the Jets by now. Right, you know, that's yeah, right. It's pretty incredible. But but what I'm saying is like any other business, if if you had that many losses you wouldn't have the luxury or the time to, to be able to do that, right? So I wonder if that model is going to change over time, right? Like now startups, instead of saying, I have this cool idea, invest in me, are they actually going to have to say, okay, this is how we're going to make money up front. Right? In this environment, uh, investors are being more cautious, right? Like you got to actually try to turn a profit or be more more cost, of, like, you know, conscious of your cost, basically. Or at least right? have a model to be able to do that, I would think, right? Because before it was like, hey, I have this cool idea, I don't know how I'm going to make money, but it's a cool idea. I think there's still going to be some of that. I think, you know, unfortunately, like investors putting money into VC funds are chasing sort of extraordinary returns. Historically, that's been the case. Cheap money has created crazy valuations and those bets have paid off. Uh, companies have gone public that are still figuring out the business model. I think right now, just given sort of we live in a post-COVID world. Um, sort of the, the sort of the, the anxiety in the consumer today around higher interest rates and inflation. That sort of party of cheap money and putting money at it, crazy valuations has slowed down. Yeah. But I don't think up. I don't think it's gone away. I think no. it'll I think it'll be back. Uh, the Fed's already saying that we're not predicting a recession. Yeah, and so. That just means to me that we're gliding past sort of the the bottom of the of the of the the valley. And, I just know on. I haven't heard. Hey, this IPO is about to come out in a very long time, and there for a while it was like every yeah. week IPO, IPO, yeah. IPO, and Spacs. And now yeah, and even Spacs, yeah, nobody's huge. doing Spacs. No one's doing Spacs. It's What's Spacs up with that? Well, it's just an investor sentiment. I mean, yeah. like. Uh, there is a, a thing of uh, people in the industry say that. IPO window is open or closed. If you're a company that's private, you don't want to go public at a time when everybody's doubting valuations of private assets. Right. Yeah. Like, why would you ever cash out at that point? So maybe you take out sort of a convertible debt. Maybe you sort of stash uh, some cash and, and cut costs just to survive in the hopes of the market sort of rebounding again and exuberance coming back. I think. I think it will come back. I think we are 
you know, asset prices haven't gone down entirely, but I think they are they're reaching a bottom at this point. Yeah, I think um, investors are kind of stepping back into the market. Right? Yeah, I feel like you're kind of looking ahead. Maybe there'll be another Fed cut or a Fed Fed interest rate. If, if I had to guess, I would say that a lot of those losses for Uber were legal fees. Because if you think about all the unions and everything that they had to fight with taxis, I'd imagine a lot of that was like a lot of funds into that. What do that you guys was, think about that? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I've talked talk too much. Go ahead. Um, no, <laughs> this here is from good. the finance bro. This is good. Yeah. So I haven't looked at the 10K. Uh, I haven't looked at the 10Qs. I just announced earnings, right? They just yeah. had their quarter. I haven't looked at it. Um, I guess, yeah, maybe there's a lot of those fees. I'm sure they handle a lot of lawsuits. A lot of their employees are contractors, right? So there's always yeah. that that comes up. Um, yeah, I haven't looked, but I'm guessing over time their their model is just kind of paying off too, right? Like they just have enough drivers out there. And I really are, think it's Uber Eats that saved them. During Uber the, Eats. During the pandemic, Uber Eats Uber was Eats. like... I think big, they acquired right? Grizzly as yeah. well, which is like liquor delivery app mm-hmm. as well. So that's probably higher margins on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do, and to your point, uh, speaking as legal bro, uh, yeah. the early on with Uber, the, the question of whether they had employees or independent contractors, which meant do you actually have to have massive sort of state taxes and you know withheld on and benefits too, and right? benefits too. Yeah. Yeah. That a lot of that risk has been taken off the table. Uh, California put in place sort of a reform that largely let the Ubers of the world and the Instacarts of the world go. And so they've taken a lot of that risk off. Of course they've spent a lot of legal fees. I think a lot of that's gone away. At this point their model is what it is. It's accepted. Um, they have the lobbying force to get that accepted. And so, yeah, I think, I think they're rationalizing a little bit of their expenses. Certainly COVID helped. I mean, I think we, all of us are ordering more than we ever have. for yeah. foreign. I, I can't think of the last time I've gone to order, like pick up food at a restaurant. It just doesn't happen anymore. Nope. I see people that pay more in the delivery fee than the actual food that they're getting, which to me does not make sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. Make good financial Guilty. decisions. You'll buy right? like a <laughs> $15 omelet and then yeah. you'll pay like 15, 20 bucks so to get crazy. it delivered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I feel bad. I mean, like, I'm, if I, the way I think about it is like if, if I were delivering an omelet, how much money would I want to be paid to right. deliver this omelet? And yeah. it's, it's not $2. So right. I tend to, maybe that's, that's the guilty sort of, liberal in me to say i should tip a little bit well no you, you tip it's just the fees and everything else on top of it yeah too, right? definitely just, yeah. yeah yep so we'll see what happens with uber but i was just like really surprised the amount of losses before they finally turned a profit so yeah. we'll see and speaking of ipos so we finally have an ipo the tiktok competitor trailer i don't know if you guys have ever used it or i've heard about it but they're like, I just hey. signed up. I'm so old. I have no <laughs> idea. So they're big as far as like UFC. They've done a lot of live streaming, stuff okay. like that. Right. Cool. So I think that's where they have a, a competitive advantage, perhaps, is because UFC is blowing up everywhere. Right? Is it just so, TikTok, though? What are we talking about? I mean, it's pretty similar. And that's a question that I wanted to ask you, being the legal bro mm-hmm. down the road with threads versus Twitter, too, is like, can you not copyright like a user experience? Is that not a thing? Because I've seen time and time again where these tech companies just like blatantly yeah. copy a whole copy thing. each other. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm, so I'll, I'll go ahead and put the disclaimer out there that I'm not an IP lawyer. This so. is not legal advice. <laughs> this is not legal advice. Is it legal, yeah, bro? Advice? Not legal advice. But yeah. uh, so does, I think what you're talking about is what they call design patents, and that's a pretty hard thing to defend. Um, okay. You might imagine that, like even. Sort of, there's nothing inherently unique about designing an experience, and like, um, but if, if you if, think about, we're talking about Snapchat, right? Like the whole story goes away after 24 hours. Instagram stole, oh, completely yeah. stole that, and now people use that. That's probably the only thing that they use. Like the feed is like dead. All the young kids are just using the stories now, right? Yeah, I just don't think it's worth the legal fees to try to fight a case like that that, that probably won't win. Even um, at that level, that big of a company, you're like Twitter versus Threads. They're like, okay, yeah, whatever. Well, Twitter, Twitter's going to probably spend legal fees. Elon loves to sue people. Um, yeah, loves being in court. But, <laughs> you know, honestly, the concept of the feed, you know, Facebook had a feed long before Twitter. Uh, if you want to talk about sort of who copied who, 
Facebook introduced the feed long before Twitter, and and that was that was effectively Twitter. It's just but like the we use public and the retweeting of it, and then the yeah. followers, where it's like not even people you know. It's yeah. like you choose just like independent people to if, follow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, look, I, like I said, I'm not an IP lawyer, <laughs> not a copyright lawyer. Yeah. Um, but as a policy, I don't think you want to limit that kind of. You don't want to protect that kind of sort of innovation to the to the point where it makes it impossible for competitors to. I mean, sure. I just don't see that as being an intellectual sort of achievement. Okay. Like I could say like, oh, look, the, the, the header on the website, I invented that. I was the very first person. Anybody else who puts a header on their website right. owes me money. And like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. I, think, I think a better uh, model is one where you compete for users and somebody wins and somebody loses. Right. So where does the innovation come in, right? So we're talking about this thriller versus TikTok. The user experience is super, you know, familiar. You just swipe up, keep going. Yeah, look, literally, speed, if right? like if I were a, an engineer at one of these companies, copied the code, took it to a competitor, pasted the code. I'd say inspired by the code. I okay. would say copied well, the code. Well, but that's that's effectively <laughs> yeah. then that would be stealing. That would be a lawsuit, right? Yeah. But if you know, if you're a coder, you know how this works. If you, if you, there's more than one way to print Hello World on a screen, right. if all of a sudden printing Hello World on a screen was protected under IP law, then we would have a very simple website. Yeah. And I'll say every developer I know, including myself, is really good at Googling. So you never <laughs> reinvent the wheel. You're just like Google, like, hey, how do I do this thing? Have you, right. By the way, I got to ask. So back in the day when all these... Uh, companies were uh, like uh, print media was were laying off people. All mm -hmm. these non tech bros were being laid off. Yeah. The tech bros retort was like, "Learn to code." Yeah. Have have the tech bros finally come and kneeled before the Chat GPT gods and said, "Oh crap, our jobs are on the line pretty soon." Because I think their I, jobs are pretty much on the I line. I think it's yeah. a mix, right? I think if you're good at adapting, a good at like, "Oh, this is a new tool that I can add to my arsenal," then you can 10x. So if yeah, I'm, but, I'm a I'm a junior developer. All of a sudden, I'm a senior developer. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Now I just need one junior developer. I don't need yeah. ten. Right. Right. So it's it's kind of interesting to see sort of technology cannibalizing sort of professions. I think that's a good thing. I think that's a history of capitalism. I think sort of it's painful, obviously. Nobody likes sort of losing their jobs and losing sort of something they've trained to be good at for, for their life, potentially. Right. But that's that's the reason why we're a competitive sort of economy. And I think that has to continue. I will say that there's a bunch of legal AI apps that are popping up. hundred so percent. Yeah. They're like, we can, you know, produce this contract. Yeah. Right. And it's going to be solid because we compared, you know, millions of data points. Yeah. And we're going to guarantee. I don't know if, if that's like, you know, like of solid like plan. Five minutes but billable hours. If you're just trying to like, yeah. let's say I have like a, a home yeah. that I'm renting. Right. And I can say like, hey write up a contract for, yeah. for my people, right? And like, they're gonna stay there and it, it'll produce a contract really quickly. So. Well, somebody who has reviewed vendor contracts for a wedding yeah. drafted by non-lawyers, I welcome ChatGPT because <laughs> they are oh, disasters. Yeah. I, I mean, bet. just yeah. complete disasters. It's just, yeah. as I'm looking at like, Kathy, I'm saying, is anybody reading this thing? <laughs> Nobody. Because it's ridiculous. Yeah. We should uh, start a, a vendor like contract yeah. AI. I'm sure in I'm the sure past, it that's everybody's like using probably space. templates in, yeah. in the past. Yeah, honestly, templates. if they would just go to ChatGPT and ask them to write them a contract on X or Y, they would probably be a better start than if they freehanded. Right. Yeah. Um, no, I, I welcome it. I think sort of it's a valid point. I think in all sort of industries, there are tiers. There's like the upper tier, first class sort of players that like, get hired for the big engagements, the big sort of deals, the big whatever. Yeah, it's like the NFL, right? Like not everybody gets to play in the NFL. Yeah, right? there's, there's millions of lawyers that aren't doing sort of, um, I won't say high value because there's a lot of nonprofit law and sure. like criminal defense law that, that goes, does not get paid monetarily, but is extraordinary work. Uh, but I think that that, that will happen, continue to happen. Uh, there will be some attrition, but that's probably a good thing. Yeah. So going back to Triller, if you guys were, you know, in the current landscape, we know the the finance bros are not likely to like be keen on investing into this IPO. Would you guys say, okay, let's go IPO right now? Uh, so they're they were talking about IPOing, right? That's they're doing that now. But um, so they're smaller than TikTok. TikTok. 
they, U.S. investors, maybe not now, or a lot of investors would want them to go public, but there's an issue with them being in China. Like if you're in the U.S., I don't think you can buy. There's like a, yeah, like there's TikTok U.S. right. USA, yeah. whatever. But I, so Thriller, uh, I think they tried to go public via SPAC, maybe like a you know year or two years ago during the pandemic, and then you know SPACs died with everything else, so they stopped that. Mm -hmm. They tried to direct list, I think, and then for whatever reason that didn't work out. Um, and now they're gonna try an IPO. IPO market's kind of bouncing back, so maybe it, it'll work out. You know, if people kind of think TikTok will yeah. get banned, maybe in the US, maybe that'll be. Something well, just a legal bro chiming in here. The, the problem is that China is uh, TikTok is Chinese owned. And so yeah. China does not allow sort of foreign sort of direct ownership of their companies. Yeah. And so U.S. lawyers and accounts have developed sort of a structure that mimics ownership um, called a VIE structure, but it's not actually ownership. It's it's a way that Alibaba has gone public and other companies like that. But just given the recent sort of talk from President Xi and others that are sort of anti sort of trade or business, I guess not trade, but sort of a little bit less sort of welcoming of foreign investment, I think, or at least making U.S. investors antsy. I just don't see TikTok listing and allowing U.S. investors to go in. And if that's the case, then that creates a lot of issues for us. And so it, it, I think it does open a door for uh, Western quote, quote Western sort of uh, company to, to mimic it, and, okay. But I I don't know. Like, who knows what the kids will like next? Yeah, know, next year. So I will say that they uh, earned forty seven point seven million in revenue last year. Okay, but they have lost money every year that they've Typical, been right? operating. Typical, right? Typical of a startup. Yeah, yeah, fast growing. Maybe they're focused on user growth, right? And yeah, they're gonna burn cash. As long as Peter plays the piper, yeah. uh, and as long as that party keeps going, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm terrible at things, by the way. But I, I, I think they, you know, it's it's a it's a confidence thing. As long as your investors believe in what you're doing, you know, they'll be able to raise either equity capital, debt capital, and it's whenever somebody finally sort of gets enough attention that says questions their business model and says like, isn't it about time you've turned a profit? Will the stock price price correct? And right when the music stops. Right? When the music starts. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's like yeah. any other bubble sort of uh, that you we've experienced. That you saw that in the housing. You saw that in the SPAC market. SPACs were a disaster. I don't know why people were investing in them. I uh, mean, the finance bro did throw a few SPACs my way that uh, I'm holding on to. Still. Some of them worked <laughs> out. You know, some of them. What, yeah. what goes up must come down. You right. Know? So that's you know that's just kind of how the market works. Like yeah. Lucid went via went public via SPAC. That's yeah. still around. I mean, it it fell down from like forty fifty dollars a share. Or They're actually it. delivering. When I was in Dallas, they have like an actual store there. I saw yeah. people driving them. I mean, they, they're nice cars. Like as far as the quality, the the build inside, the materials. They're they're pretty good. Yeah, I was long impressed. term. I mean, maybe it's good to buy the dip. I don't know. Yeah. This isn't finance advice, finance right. road advice, but you know, <laughs> for entertainment look purposes at the 10K, only. Look at the ten Q. Make your own decisions. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, Tesla has established an e vehicle market, and it, I, it has turned some profit, but it's mostly been unprofitable. And that that's just the story of what you what you're doing when you're an unproven technology. As long as Investors believe consumers will eventually come around like they'll keep funding the idea. Yeah Even when Tesla went public, I think that in 08 when um, the financial crisis happened GM was like the biggest automaker at the time or whatever right. Elon said he tried to get uh, Money he's trying to raise money because Tesla was on the verge of bankruptcy and it was like around Christmas time or something like that He was able to raise money. I forget from where uh, they made an investment and that's how they survived and now they're like the biggest EV company yeah, It's crazy. You know now it's a great investment uh, but yeah, I mean, they even when they were public, they were publicly listed. They used to sell shares on the open market, you know, additional shares mm -hmm. just to raise cash, and that diluted investors. So I wouldn't be surprised if Lucid keeps doing that for the next five years or whatever before, you know, they're like a bigger company as yeah. well. Yeah, fun, say, fun, fundamentally, these companies are bad investments. Like yeah, they have yeah. no revenue. Like you look at the multiple Tesla of Tesla's sort of share uh, stock value versus like a GM. And it's, you know, a GM might be trading. I don't know what it's trading at. I would assume like a six to 10. Something. And yeah. it, Tesla's probably like a 20. 30X something. You know, which makes no sense. Earnings, yeah. yeah. But I will say that the community that they've built 
is amazing. It, it almost reminds me of like an Apple product, right? Like oh, everybody, yeah. every Tesla owner always speaks highly of their car, how much yep. they love it. Like you don't ever hear anybody saying that like about a Chevy Volt, right? Like we're well, a Tesla owner. <laughs> I am a Tesla. About it? Yeah, tell us about your experience, your experience with owning so ex- far. You were you weren't a Tesla owner, and you were like, oh, the stock price, all this and that. Right. Now, how do you feel about it? I guess. Yeah, it? no. I, well, one, I wish I had invested invested in Tesla a long time ago, but same, that same. that's no no longer the case here. Um, look, it's it's a fantastic vehicle. I think. There was a here time. Comes a pitch, here comes a pitch, right? No, there was a time <laughs> when they were having issues on production and delivery and quality control. That was a bit dicey. So does Toyota, right? So does GM. Yeah, right? yeah, no, for sure. But when you're, when it's your very first sort of vehicle, you're the very first sort of doing this kind of thing, like just like anything else, like the market will look at you and expect you not to fail and not to make those mistakes. Definitely. Um, I I got into it for sort of uh, environmental reasons. I've got a commute and I thought, well, and also economic reasons, like gas prices were through the roof. Uh, but and also because it's fun to drive and, and, it's, fun and to drive. it's like a high quality experience. I mean, it's almost like an Apple experience. I don't know how to else describe it, but like it's like it is. an Apple-esque experience, right? I think they should be proud of the fact that the vehicle is uh, Tesla has has made e vehicles uh, cool. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think other automakers are ca- are catching up, and that's a good thing ultimately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't want to drive an EV Prius. Like, that's still not a thing. Right. right? You know? right. That was a good good selling car, though. <laughs> but if you ask any young person, hey, what's your dream car? The majority you are going to say a Tesla, right? Especially now. Yeah. Newer, like younger kids probably nowadays. Yeah. yeah. I think Tesla has a cool factor, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. So let's talk about threads that's only holding on by a thread, right? So first week, <laughs> <laughs> first week, second week, yeah. huge engagement. Everybody yeah. was excited because they built in basically your Instagram followers, right. they just like copied over that social graph and all of a sudden you have yep. everybody that you like, they're following you all of a sudden. So everybody was excited. Yep. That lasted for a little bit like and now people aren't really <laughs> using it. How many threads have you posted? I don't know how many, but I definitely use it like every day. You've been more like engaged. I, yeah. I've been seeing that. Yeah. There's a few problems with it. I think like uh, obviously there's no search. Um, there's no real time sort of following what the latest thread has been posted. So, right. and right now you can't like just see like who you're following. Like they'll just like mix in like random people. I will say that the sort of like the algorithm does like throw Feed, people that you might be interested in. Feeding so, you what you want. Yeah. yeah. So it does a pretty good job, but it's not like just showing me the people that I follow. Yeah. Look, I think threads uh, after the initial sort of exodus from Elon's you know, tyranny at uh, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, now X. Uh, uh, that sort of has faded. And then you end up with what Twitter was, which was a company that like has a core following that believes in the product. I loved it. I got all my news, yeah, right. my breaking Same. news, the interesting people that I followed, their thoughts sort of immediately. And then I loved it. But as a social media company, it was not the most popular. And I think that's what Threads is waking up to. It's like, yeah, it's just Twitter. What I thought was gangster was that the timing of when they launched, right? Because yep. like right before Twitter had announced like, hey, we're gonna probably start limiting the amount of tweets. We're gonna probably start charging for all that. And then like Threads was like, we gotta go, we gotta go. Gotta and go. they just launched it. It wasn't really even ready. They just said, we gotta they go. They saw an this opening and just was like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if Elon had just bought Twitter and stepped away and let it just be going on so normal course, it would not be here today. Everything that Twitter now acts has suffered is because of Elon and it's because of a polarizing CEO. And it makes you realize, it, you know, we, we get bored of companies having corporate speak, sort of not taking positions and, and being this or that and avoiding politics. That's the reason why you don't want to polarize your users. Right. I will say that it hasn't really crashed, right? Like people were saying that it's gonna like be horrible, super buggy. He laid off a lot of people, yeah. and it makes you wonder, like, did they need that many people? Oh, they did. Right? That, that's the reason why he was like charging or capping the number of like tweets you could read because he didn't want to get a big bill from sort of his servers yeah. company. I don't know if text is that heavy on like space for that. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. Uh, well, I I think. 
um, a lot of like a lot of issues were caused with those layoffs. Um, it's definitely bad PR the, for sure. The content on Twitter just became toxic. Honestly, I yeah. I've never seen so many car crashes and police <laughs> videos in my life. Honestly, yeah. that it was like it was just stressful, and I just stopped. Going it's sure is, it's not your algorithm. Yeah, like you, you got the Tesla and all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. Like no, if, 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 if I'm up at like midnight, I'm watching first 48. <laughs> but it's not, it's just not good. It's stressful. I can't do that. Yeah. Don't hit the game. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, we'll see where that goes. But I, I was surprised when they just like basically copied everything that Twitter was. And there for a while, I was like, okay, they're, they're going to capitalize on this moment. And all of a sudden, like, People just laughed again. You know, they're Elon sued X. Facebook saying, hey, you took our engineers yeah. and like recoded Twitter. <laughs> but Facebook said, we actually hired very zero to very few of your Twitter engineers and we just coded it ourselves. Right. And yeah. It's it's not it's like I've said, that goes to our early point. It's not it's not like a magic sort of formula. Anybody can anybody can do that. It just. Yeah. Facebook has a user base and the connectivity to make it popular sort of very quickly with its Instagram sort of. The sign up process was so great. It was genius. It was just <laughs> yeah. like you click here and you're signed yeah, up. Yeah, your things, account's right? already there. Yeah. You don't have to create a new account. Yeah. Like, do you want to follow Connect all the same all people? Friends. Yep, let's go. That's why it blew yeah. up. It was yeah. just like two, two, three days. It had, a, I don't know how many, 100 million signups or yeah. something crazy. And I actually like the design better. It's like real minimal and like yeah. it's, it looks better than Twitter, honestly. It's got potential and it's good to have a competitor out there to keep, you know, Elon on his toes and then. You know, I don't know. Yeah, credit to Elon. I don't think anybody could have made Mark Zuckerberg so popular. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just like, I never, he wants to fight him. Pick your never, poison, you know? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking Zuckerberg all day. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude's a black belt in jujitsu or He I just put an octagon in his backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if your neighbor put a black, you know, uh, an octagon next to you in yeah. their backyard, you wouldn't want to mess with that guy. Elon's right? going to back out. No yeah. way he fights Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> he said, name, name the, the place. He said, let's do it. He needs to get in shape. Like he's like, like, yeah. lose like 40 pounds yeah i mean he's not you know but he just yeah he hey i'm not one to judge but i'm just saying like <laughs> yeah. i would not make those i would not fight my i'll give him my nutritional plan and then <laughs> there you, you go. got like the boxing you know you got your boxing yeah. friends so you know you yeah. give him that plan elon hit us up you know yeah hit us up on the Shoot maverick podcast DM. you know yeah. hey be on yeah definitely <laughs> so you haven't used threads at all like you haven't no really i use it a ton uh, i uh i do so so Facebook slash Meta. I don't know what we're calling it nowadays, but Meta. they're they're taking a conscious approach at filtering out a lot of like the politics and the vitriol that like is great for engagement, but it's very toxic and like turns off a lot of people. Um, so th my experience on Threads has been a little bit different. I'm, I'm I follow politics very closely and. I just don't get the politics fixed there, which is probably yeah. fine. I've taken a break from it, honestly. Uh, but it's different, and it would be nice to be, like I said, be able to search and see real time discussion on what's going on in real time, and you can't do that right now on Threads. Right. Let's talk about NFTs. Me being the tech bro. Oh yeah. I, I'm big NFT, right? But yeah. Yeah. like NFT sales have continued to drop. Uh, this I'm last gonna... month is like probably the lowest activity. Do you still so hold far. NFTs? How I many do, NFTs yeah. do you Diamond have? hands. You don't, you don't want to know. <laughs> We're yeah. not paper hands. Either. Right. Yeah. Exactly. No paper <laughs> hands. But yeah, I mean, I, I like NFTs. I think the, the value is only going to get better. I think what's happening is like if you remember early internets or early apps, right? Like when the iPhone came out, there was an app that just like did a fart. Right. Yeah. Like, the like flashlight. The, the, the flashlight. Like it made a lot of money though. Yeah, yeah. but that stuff's the not lighter. gonna stick around, right? Like if there's no utility, if there's like not really any value. There was like, a lot of data collected that was sold to other companies for yeah. that. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> With the farts. Yeah. 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 You remember that flashlight app? Like that or the beer. Remember the beer you oh, would hold oh, the phone yeah. and like do the beer thing? Yeah, it's a funny okay. thing, but like what they don't care about that. They want the the ability to monitor what you visit on websites your, your location sell services yeah, right? sell it. your right. interest yeah. to sell that all that yeah, yeah. so we'll table that discussion but <laughs> let's let's talk about nfts so you know at a high level do you guys believe in nfts have you played around with any nft a lot legal oh no i let tech uh, finance bro <laughs> yeah well i think so i think nfts um it was definitely hyped right big hype cycle i do think there's a place for them later on 
Yeah. Like I think the Crypto Punks, uh, the Bored Apes, you know, those will stick around. Those will be around. The V Friends. V Friends, because I believe in Gary V. Yeah. So I think those will be around as well. <laughs> hey, he'll if that if that guy. He's he a Jets fan. I can't you know? I can't <laughs> cheer for Gary V. Gary V. If you're listening, stop being a Jets fan. It's not gonna happen. He's <laughs> gonna, gonna buy happen. the Jets. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's I, I respect. It. I respect yeah. it. You know, he's a guy that you punch. He's just gonna get, keep getting back up. Yeah. So I think V Friends will be around. But a bunch of them will die. I think 90% more of them, you know, a lot of them will go away. The board apes, I think they, they'll stick around for sure because they have just, they, they built up a bunch of like ecosystem around them as well. Mm -hmm. And the uh, crypto punks are kind of like the original one, right? right? So like, that's like if you if you own NFTs later on, that's like the art. The that's original. like the historic, yeah, yeah. Like the one, right? So it'll be yeah. around. Even though I heard Justin Bieber, he bought one for, or a board ape actually, he bought it. It was worth 1.3 million at the top, and now it's like 69, 60,000. <laughs> Everything that's a ticket right now is going to be an NFT. So Super Bowl ticket oh, yeah. in the future, NFT. Yeah, I think so. Sure, has to yeah. be. But what? How much would you pay for a paper ticket? Like it, it, this all comes down to. So yeah, yeah, no. So that's what the market is. Yeah. NFTs are collectibles, and like if you have a Babe Ruth card from back in the day, that's going to be worth a lot of money. I think right. those kinds of things. Uh, Board punks and sort of all the other crypto. <laughs> crypto he just made a new one. You made a new punks. one. We should try to create that. That's that's <laughs> trademark. <the> <laughs> Nobody start that right now. Right? Uh, trademark. Yeah. Those are uh, those will be valuable because they represent a moment in time. But yeah, sure. I don't think the use case for NFTs is going to be that kind of thing. I think yeah. there's. There's for value to the technology on what for ownership of stuff. You don't think that's a, that's like value. Yeah, there was talk about so like for example, sort of uh, recording ownership of property in the United States is yeah. a very antiquated system. Yeah. So it's, Snoop Dogg Death Row is going to be like a basically like an NFT record label. Right. I, don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> that, that means that you can own part of a song. You can invest directly into the artist uh, that who, you So you're going to be paid royalties on yeah. it? Yeah. Absolutely. I've seen that, actually. I yeah. forgot who. There was a, like some rapper came out with this, an album, yeah, and people bought into it. Yeah, uh, no, I think like, that's a cool model. It's a cool model. It, it could be replicated with like current contract law, <laughs> just putting out there for... <laughs> For yeah. legal bros out there, but like maybe, uh, but sure, yeah, I'm I'm buying. People selling their demo nowadays are just like you know buy my NFT, you know, right. and that's the way to get funded. If they're good, maybe they stick around. And it's verified on the blockchain. You can say yeah, like hey, you actually own this legit song. Like it's it's on the blockchain. But that's what it really is. It's just a record of ownership, right? It's not, Definitely. it's not the drawing itself. It's not the song itself. You know, it's just a way of recording ownership of something that we can't, phys not tangible. And that's. Yeah. And to authenticate, right? So, like Louis Vuitton is going to start doing NFTs to authenticate their purses, right? So you can say, this is a legit, it's not a replica. Yeah. Right. A lot of people where I'm in, in New York are going to be very mad about that. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> There's a big of, market. There's a lot of Louis V on the sidewalk and <laughs> right. uh, Gucci and, yeah. Yeah. I, so you guys shout don't out, have shout out Chinatown. <laughs> shout out Chinatown. You guys don't have like a like a MetaMask wallet or anything like that, right? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I, He's like, no, nah, I got my N95 mask. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, look, I just, I, I just, no, I, I see that as a uh, collectible um, board. What is it? Board it, board it. <laughs> didn't do it for me. Crypto punk. Yeah. Crypto punks didn't do it for me. Actually, what I thought was interesting, the NBA was doing this for basketball cards yeah, right. and videos. Top yeah. shots. I thought top shots. Yeah. So I thought that uh, okay, I understand that people like collectible cards and moments in sports. I'm yeah. a big sports. A fan. LeBron like block on equal dollar or something like that. Like I, I don't know, it's a moment in time. I would pay. For, I want to pay for the moment when uh, what's his face said. I would take Iguodala. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Oh, man. That's... Um, I forget. Anyway. Max, Ma Max, Max Kellerman. Kellerman. Max Kellerman. Yeah. Shout out Max Kellerman. Yeah. Yeah. He should... Uh, he's he's no longer in ESPN. Maybe yeah. he's looking R. for... You know, Maverick Podcast. <laughs> there we go. Hey, hit us up on the DM. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you want bad takes, hire <laughs> Max Kellerman. Yeah. But I think it's cool. I mean, I think it like Starbucks is going to do an NFT program for like their like consumer the rewards, rewards and stuff program, like that, right? Set of stars. Okay. Yeah. So people are adapting slowly, right? But I think it's it, there's definitely potential for sure. It's I'm more excited about AI. I think AI is more believable than NFTs, right? But um, yeah. But yeah. I, if you read every pitch deck now of a startup, they're going to have to talk about how they're AI enabled because oh, yeah. that's yeah. the latest trend. That's the new frontier. Yeah. It was uh, all AI to everything. You AI do, to right? everything. Yeah. 
It's it's you know it's 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 in some ways it's funny because you see the story every time, uh, but we still keep believing because um, don't stop believing in the words of Journey and the dream we trust, yeah. right? And, <laughs> and the dreams we trust in the funny words of stories. So the the captions on the Maverick podcast are AI driven. Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys know that. Really? Yeah. Oh, when man. did you implement you're this adopted. AI technology? You're I mean, a hot startup. Yeah. You should you know talk, start talking. <laughs> Your evaluation yeah. just went up. Just 10X. went up. Price yeah. just went up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Today's yeah. price is not yesterday's price. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I think you just give it the inputs and say, "Hey, what's well, a potential like TikTok viral caption based on this post that's yeah. related to this?" Yeah. And it just gives you options. But so that's, that's cool. a good thing. Like this technology is a good thing. Like now we don't have to sit and like view hours of video just to pick the right moment right like, let's show me some examples and i'll pick them and i'll post them and, and that's yeah. good that's a good thing it's it's no different than any of the technological advance in my opinion yeah for sure let's yeah. talk about the apple card yeah. and golden sacks oh, they're, they're like hey you know this was cool like you know it was like one of the most successful card launches of all time right when it right. first launched and of course apple product the user experience was amazing the card was beautiful right. like it doesn't have any numbers like yeah. it's, it's really cool right you're, you're falling behind here i know <laughs> <laughs> so the app is amazing right and like one millions of, of signups right off the gate but now like the marriage is kind of like a little trouble. bit of a divorce yeah. i don't know, see in marriage counseling you know <laughs> yeah it's just the like, sparks not there. years yeah. in you know that's yeah. just you know you know just <laughs> and my understanding is like they they're not able to monetize the the normal inner exchange fees yeah. right so they're not really making money off of this product right and it's really more on apple's benefit credit card businesses run off of interchange fees that's yeah. their profit center right anytime you run an amex sometimes i don't know if you've ever been to a restaurant it doesn't take amex all the time oh yeah it's yeah. because amex takes such fees. a big cut from right. their charge right but i will say amex like as far as their like user yeah, experience sure. oh, yeah. Yeah, their yeah. rewards uh like it's just top notch but i just don't like goldman not charging interchange fees and providing the lending on this thing i i maybe they thought there would be some stickiness and like customer acquisition and that yeah. would be like a uh, loss lead kind of generating product uh, but I didn't frankly if you when I, I I don't I didn't sign up for the Apple card but I don't think it's branded Goldman and I have it it has uh, I uh, think it has their logo but it's like super minimal it's a white card no numbers wonderful. it just has your name wonderful. you really use the app more than you do the actual physical card and if you use yeah. Apple Pay it's two percent back on everything. Goldman's right? a little bit of a different beast. It's not like your JP Morgan, your Citibank. Like Goldman doesn't have branches that take deposits. They don't they're not really in the home loan. Yeah, hear oh, that. Look at this. Right? Look it's that. also a metal card, right? That's so cool, right? That's that's no card. Right. Goldman, Goldman on the back. Sex. There you go. I yeah. think the Apple was kind of mad that uh MasterCard has to be on there, I guess for credit card rules or whatever. And there you go. Have that logo on there. Yeah, I, I think sort of look. Goldman is a lot of smart people work at Goldman, so I'm sure they had a reason why they negotiated the deal they had. Uh, but Apple is a, it's an elephant. Like it can oh, yeah. move terms and it could say, look, if you don't do this deal, Goldman, I'm just going to go over to JP Morgan. Yeah. And I'm sure that, that put a lot of fear in the eyes of Goldman execs and that's why they did it. But I, 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 I don't see the value. I don't, I don't think, I mean, do you have any other Goldman products? Uh, no, I mean, I had like a Marcus savings account, Marcus, I guess. that's yeah, about it. Yeah. That's what they wanted uh, to do with Apple. But Apple was like, no, we want Goldman, mm. the brand right on the card with Apple, not, you know, Marcus, the, yep. the consumer brand or whatever, right? The savings brand that they had. Yeah. So the rumors are that now they're having a shop, like who's going to take it over. There's rumors that potentially Amex, but if I know Amex, Amex isn't going to go No shot. It. No. They, they want to be like, no hey, shot. They're we're the, we're the headliner one. here, right? right? Like they don't want to be like second to Amex Apple, is the right? premier credit card company. Like they're a credit card company first and a bank second. Like yeah. they they figured out the credit card game. I don't see them sort of bowing down to Apple, Tim Cook. Like that, that they'll they'll have to negotiate a better, better deal for that to work. I don't. Yeah. Know. Don't why it. doesn't Apple just become their own bank? They have so many they reserves. Could. Why not? Just they have a ton of cash. Ah, they could. I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> legal bro here. Uh, right. Banks are subject to regulation. Like if, if Apple tomorrow owned a bank, it would be subject to the Bank Holding Company Act and subject to supervision by the Federal Reserve. And by the way, 
there's been historically a clear sort of delineation between banking and industry. Because if you didn't have sort of those restrictions, like banks would own everything, right? They would right. have, they have all the money, they can buy every business, so all of a sudden banks are your grocery stores. And that's that's just not good for policy. So uh, Apple would not be able to have sort of its core business as a bank. And so they can't really do that. Okay. Uh, they can, they, I'm sure they can come up with interesting sort of, uh, structures to get around that, but ultimately, I think it just it's a regulatory issue. I was really surprised just because they have so much in reserve. Like, they don't ever acquire anybody. They never just do stuff on their own. Like, yep. I, I don't get it. I don't know what they're going to do with so much money. Their success has caused all those problems because anytime they acquire a business, it's going to be reviewed for scrutiny by regulators saying, "Here's a, a behemoth Apple." buying its next competitor and keeping sort of a monopoly on the business. I, I don't, it's, it's not quite a monopoly and it's Apple products are not quite there, but Samsung's still a big competitor, but I think that's part of the calculus. Also, it's just, they have enough money to build whatever they want. Like if there is a competitive threat, they'll just build a competitive, whatever that threat is. Right. So random question. We're talking about all these founders. Who's your favorite founder of all time? Uh, I'll the defer goat. to the, uh, for favorite founder. Um, I mean, I guess like shout out Steve Jobs. You know, yeah. he was he was great. Um, you know, follow. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of him. Still, just he was just such a great entrepreneur. But I think you can't really like no one can really beat Elon Musk. I guess the fact that he's just been so successful. You know, in different industries and launched so many companies. And you know, he's done space. He's done finance with PayPal. He's done EV. super big industries, right? You like know. you would think you would never be able to disrupt the, like the automotive industry. And he's right. like, watch me do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, you know, he's just an interesting guy to follow along. I don't know anyone else that, that would do that and, and would dedicate so much to what he does, you know, but yep. that's just my opinion. That's a good pick. Yeah. I, I, I don't have one, honestly. Uh, I think every, like, like like anybody else, like we all have our flaws. There's a lot of flaws that Elon has. I wish he didn't have. No one's perfect. A lot yeah, of right. flaws in Bill Gates. A lot of flaws in every other founder. You know, I think sort of Mark Zuckerberg. A lot oh, yeah. of flaws. Except for Mark Cuban, he's he's pretty. Uh, Mark Cuban. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's my Mark favorite. Cuban, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. your yeah. Well, fair enough. But but <laughs> he he's the kind of founder that sold before his business was profitable. So props to him, yeah. but uh, his business, he, he wasn't really an, well, maybe he was an innovator. I, I, uh, he's clearly a billionaire. Definitely for the streaming, the streaming, that's Audio like, right? nobody was doing that. He was yeah, like, Hey, I want to listen to the basketball games yeah. where I'm at. They're not broadcasted here. Right. Podcast.com. Like com. Yeah. You did, uh, Indiana basketball. That's what he, that's why he got into it. Super big innovation. I yeah. think Yahoo, like Yahoo acquired him and he was smart. Cause he knew in the nineties, it was a bubble. He, yeah. I think Goldman was his bank. And he was like, let me sell call options and um, and buy puts, which basically yeah. protected his position. Either way. He made money, yeah. actually, I think, on the way down, yeah. which was actually pretty, pretty smart amazing. of him. Yeah, I, look, I think, shout out Mark Cuban shout and Dallas Cuban. Mavs. You're a Mavs fan. He should be on Even the Mavs you're podcast. In Absolutely. He should be a hit Thunder. It, hit us up on the DM. Hey, <laughs> Mark, <laughs> uh, I live right across from Literally. American Airlines Center. Literally right Come across. on the podcast. Yeah. Um, no, he definitely, definitely, like, kudos to him. He's been a decent NBA owner, so he clearly has yeah. characteristics and of leadership and ability to convince people to follow an idea, which is ultimately what you and want. And he's passionate about the he's game, passionate. which a lot yeah. of the owners aren't really. They don't have that relationship you with the players. You want that 100%, right? and yeah. he's got sort of a moral compass. So <laughs> yeah. When COVID hit, he made sure... You know, his employees that worked the stands and whatever, even though they were not having any events, got yeah, paid. They got taken care of. I, I can't say much bad about him. I just wish I was him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are getting the signal here yeah. that we're running out of time. But before we wrap oh. up, let's talk oh, about what's on your playlist. Let's I always, get a part two. <laughs> we yeah. definitely we yeah, need to come back. I mean, I, I really think that you guys should just be a reoccurring. I'm right? just going to steal a key from the studio and just, you there know, you sneak in. I've yeah. been trying to launch a pod of with you guys forever nice. and, and you, you guys always like brush me off go away nice. well it's because of the new york incident when you got the uber <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's what started it what was that yeah. about yeah, yeah. <laughs> tbd but let's talk about what's on your playlist yeah 
Uh, I'll start. Yeah, uh, go for it. It's, it's playlist right now is is evolving. I have uh, historically so so for me music speaks to moments and times of yeah. my life when I was happy, and so some of that was growing up uh, riding the truck with my dad and listening to '90s country. Yeah. So I have a lot of like '90s country. Um, That's why I have the old man like soft rock. <laughs> like all those oh, songs, yeah. I know every like, soft rock know song. I know songs, all those right? in the world. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. I sing them. Oh. Chicago. Kat yeah. says, "Why oh. do you know the song?" Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna see Chicago. Shout <laughs> right. out Chicago. Yeah, Shout definitely. out Chicago. Uh, here. So uh, I don't know in that genre, you know, uh, Kathy's clown when that comes on, nice. Little Reba. <laughs> that yep. that rings back memories, a specific memory of riding in my dad's vehicle. Yeah. Uh, but then you have sort of weird songs i remember walking through rome and it was just me and my buddy jeff uh who passed away He's an yeah, awesome R. guy R. Jeff. um but we were walking down this hill and then this neighborhood blaring out of the middle of nowhere was this uh bg song uh called massachusetts which i don't know if you've ever heard it's oh. the most it's like if you are a casual bg's fan you've never heard it but if you're a deep cuts BG's fan, you As know you the song, and I just that's on my playlist because it takes me back to that. That's cool. uh, that's other than cool. that, you know, I just it's 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 a big big melody of, of different songs. Uh, I love Sinatra. I love uh, I love a lot of uh, Mexican child Jose Alfredo Jimenez. Like yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think I influenced you on all the Tejano, like all the Tejano. Tejano, <laughs> like, Tejano brings me a lot of yeah. great memories. Yeah, yeah. and um. Yeah, Shelly Lares, like, I, I love that stuff. Yeah. So for me, like, it, it just, if it takes me back to a moment in time when I was happy, I, I, I love I loved it. Awesome. That's cool. How about you? Uh, I'm a mix. So I uh, listen to everything. I think growing up, we all kind of, music was a big part, right, of us. Like, that's why you're a DJ yeah. on the, you know, on the what side. Thousand percent? Yeah. You're a podcaster, you know, and you worked in radio. And that, I think, just growing up, he loved music, right? So we just, we all listened to the 80s, 70s music growing up. And then 90s were big for, like, hip-hop and R&B. So I listened to a lot of, like, you know, I'll have, like, oldies come on. Um, I have, like, R&B. I go back and listen to a lot of R&B songs, like Avon, you know, Usher, old school nice. Usher. Um, Genuine, you know, stuff like that. I like rap. Jay-Z, you know, my favorite rapper. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I listen greatest to rapper life. greatest greatest of all time. <laughs> yeah. Hope. Uh, besides that, I mean, I listen to like a lot of the newer stuff, like Bad Bunny. Um, I listen to Burner Boy, and it's just a mix. I don't know. I listen. We to, sang uh, a lot of those at uh, five a.m. in New York. Uh, yeah. a week or two ago. Yeah, it was great. It was great. We used to do like a end of year Christmas wrap yeah. up. Right? Yeah, let's do it. So, let's do yeah. it. You know, I love Christmas music. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And Mariah Carey will be number one again. <laughs> she is yeah. always. She, she is number one. She rules that time for yeah. sure. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only legal bro, Jorge Solis, yes. and the finance bro, Daniel Solis, on the Maverick Podcast. Keep grinding because in dreams we trust. We trust, baby. <laughs>